students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here in Hungary. I hope everybody is having an okay week so far. Uh, students, in this class we are looking at speaking part two and looking at what to do to get those high band scores and give uh, a good speech. Hi Awaz, hi Abhishek, nice to see our members joining in. Uh, students, this uh, lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help, also help with statement of purpose or academic CVs, and check us out there. For general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com, that's general IELTS help.com. For lots and lots of goodies on both of these websites, I'll uh, show you real quick. Here's the website for academic with the blue background. You have over 100 hours of video lessons with strategies. You have a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC, including an app, and you have original practice exams. Click that big red button to join there. For the general, it's a green background at gileshelp.com, and you want to click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Hemant. Hi, Ferdovs. Nice to see you in the class. And again, students, these websites and learning portals are supported by applications as well. Academic IELTS Help for the aehelp.com and general IELTS Help for the gileshelp.com. You can link the app to your web account for a really dynamic learning experience. If you have questions about our products, just uh, reach out to me, adrian at aehelp.com. That's my email. Hi, Rajveer. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Hemant. Uh, and uh, I'll get back to you as uh, soon as I can. Uh, so today, speaking part two, followed by reading. And we have a good number of members already in the class. Hi, Elena. This is a members chat class in 90 minutes. I will host the uh, reading class. Uh, to become a member of our channel, uh, you can uh, click the join button. There's four different levels of membership. You can check those out. Members, this is a speaking class, so please make sure to speak. I remind you every single time because it is so very, very important, especially these days. A lot of us are on lockdown or restricted home leave uh, due to this pandemic. Hopefully that situation will resolve itself somewhat soon. Uh, but again, uh, because of this, uh, a lot of us, of course, are practicing or speaking less uh, we're uh, using it less at work, less with our friends. So it's just that much more important to, sp to pay special extra attention to uh, speaking. Maybe uh, pick up the phone, use social media, chat through Skype, WhatsApp, uh, record yourself on your phone, but just keep speaking, okay? Don't lose your uh, language, okay? All right. Um, here we go, students. So, um, part two speaking. Rajveer, you said slight window of your camera is visible. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I see what you're, what you mean by that. Yeah, I'll fix that. Just give me two seconds here, Rajveer. Yeah, I see what you're referring to. Just give me one moment. There, Rajveer, that'll fix it, I bet. Yeah. I'm working in a in my European studio here, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, I see what you're talking about, Rajveer. There you go. Cool. Thanks for letting me know, Rajveer. All right, so uh, into the speaking we go. Uh, here we go. Speak, 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 and repeat. All right? So here we go. Uh, you've just finished your part one speaking, and you're feeling good. The examiner says... Uh, Okay, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card with some questions on it. Here's uh, some note paper. Here's a pencil. You'll have one minute to look at the questions on the card, think about your answer, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. So, of course, as you know, uh, this is where strategy becomes really important. Part two is the least similar 
to any kind of conversation that we have on a daily basis. So you really do have to put an extra time to practice part two because it's unnatural. We don't give little two minute mini speeches on random topics about people or objects on a daily basis. Uh, it's just not something that we do, most of us anyway, unless you have some kind of a job that deals with that, but most of us don't. So you really have to establish your strategy, stick to your strategy and practice your strategy. Okay, it's really, really important. So you turn over the card and uh, this is what you see, okay? Uh, part two, talk about a person you consider very brave. Who is this person? What is this person like? What makes this person courageous? What would you ask this person in a conversation and why? And then of course it gives you the instructions in a written format as well, usually on the card. Okay. All right, uh, so here, our step number one is to read the card really carefully. And we read the topic sentence twice. So talk about a person you consider very brave. Now, if you don't know the meaning of brave, okay, so you're like, yeah, what is that? Don't panic because oftentimes on the card, you'll get another word, a synonym that paraphrases that word to really try to help you figure out what it means. And here you can see the adjective courageous. So courageous, of course, and brave are the same in meaning. So never panic. Look at the card. Look at other uh, pieces of information that can help you. Okay. All right, members. So we've read the card. We have a clear idea of what it is. And then, of course, we identify the type of topic, right? Person, object, place, event, or idea. It's going to be one of those five. I almost guarantee you maybe a slight combination, but uh, it will dominantly be one of those. Hi, Maksud. Welcome to our group of members. I'm happy that you were able to join and I see you have access to videos and exams and requests as well. So send me an email after. Okay. So Awaz says it's kind of a person and an event. So mainly a person Awaz, you're right. You put it first. That's good. Event is kind of the courageous concept, right? Uh, for Dov says it's a person primarily. So let's focus on that. Charlie, Elena, Rajvir agree and right you are. Um, it's a person. And when you talk about a person, uh, what should you include? So what should you include? Yeah, Abhishek says, um, well, put in their appearance. Okay, to put in their personality. And personality has to be backed by actions, okay? So remember, members, that personality and actions in most cases should not be separate. So you shouldn't be like, well, this person is, of course, courageous. They're also kind and hardworking and, and then go, go, go. And then you start describing them. No, for each personality that you say, if you say that they're kind, immediately explain their action. So they're kind. Uh, they always uh, uh, volunteer their Saturdays to help uh, homeless people. Okay. So always back it up. All right. Yeah, Hamant, very good. So Hamant, nice description. Hamant says it's a person. His relation with me, his abilities, personality traits, and actions corresponding to those traits. Very nice, Hamant. Very, very nice description there. Okay. So that's exactly what you want to do. Perfect. All right. So now, uh, what's our next step? <laughs> this one I'm not going to tell you because I want you to really keep this one in mind. So uh, what's our next step? So we figured out the appearance, personality, and so on. What's our next step?
think about two to three people, right? So think of two or three possible answers. All right. Um, that's what you want to do. Uh, just going back to uh, appearance, okay? Uh, we just released a new uh, speaking sample video with a Vietnamese candidate who does a really good job, uh, Brendan. Uh, did any of you see that video? So did everybody see that video that, that's with Brendan, the Vietnamese candidate? Um, in that video, part two is uh, also about a person it's uh, somebody that you worked together with on a project. So it's teamwork on a project. Talk about a person that you worked with together in a team on a project. Okay, so a lot of you saw that. Good for Dov's, good Hamant. Um, and that part two is also a person. Now, uh, one of the people who saw the video commented. They said, oh, it's kind of weird. It's unnatural because... The person even describes uh, Hue's appearance. She's about 165 centimeters tall, long, dark hair, and a stern look on her face usually. And that's just not how people talk in real life. And I wrote back to this person that, yeah, that's right. That's not how we talk in real life. But in real life, we don't have little two-minute speeches either. And if we talk about a person for two minutes, it's really awkward if the listener cannot picture that person even a little bit okay so saying that it's a girl or a boy is not enough uh, we really need to give a little bit of description so we create some kind of an image in the listener's mind when we're talking about this unknown individual for two minutes especially if it's not somebody famous like uh, Ronaldo or Michael Jackson, where people know what that person looks like, okay? So if you're talking about your uncle, as somebody just said, Pavan, then describe your uncle, because I have no idea what your uncle looks like, and it's really weird to listen for two minutes without knowing a little bit about their appearance, okay? Does that make sense, why that's important to include? So yeah, it's unnatural, but part two is a little presentation. It's not an everyday situation. Okay, so does that make sense, members, why that little one, two sentence, uh, sentences about appearance is such a valuable asset for those two minutes? Okay, <laughs> Roshni says dolphin trainer, yeah, okay, makes sense, cool, thank you, Dr. Krishna, for confirming that. Okay, so let's think of two, three possible answers um, Roshni says a dolphin trainer. Okay, uh, always give uh, the person a name, George, the dolphin trainer. That is a unique and interesting answer. All right. Um, my best friend Jack, Awaz says, okay, best friend Jack. All right. For Dobbs, father who is a doctor. Okay. Haman says, my friend Jerry, a paracommando in the army. Okay, a paracommando, for those of you who don't know, would be a person who uh, jumps out of an airplane um, and uh, parachutes into a situation. Okay, all right. Uh, for Dov says, brother who is a firefighter. Very good. All right, um, so uh, students... Really good, Elena says, Bob, mountain climber. Okay, so in uh, this situation, let's, uh, so usually I, I take a vote on this one, but this time I'm just going to um, uh, pick one. So let's go with Ferdov's suggestion, uh, father who is a doctor. Uh, for Dobbs, uh, what is your father's name? It, you don't have to give us your real father's name. Just give me a name, okay? 
um, that you wanted to save for this one. Or if your father really is a doctor and you want to use your real dad's name, go ahead, share it with us if you're comfortable with that. So who is it? Yeah, and I see for Dobbs is saying nurse who is helping patients in, with the coronavirus. That's where I'm going with this for Dobbs, and I'm going to explain why. Okay. Okay, so for Dobbs says, let's call him Kakim. Kakim. Okay, so now I'll write that in here. Okay, so Father Kakim, who is a doctor. So we're going to pick that one. For today, um, students, if you get an idea to answer for part two, even if you're imagining or making it up, especially if you're imagining and making it up, it's a really wise idea. It's a smart idea to choose one that you can link to a current context or a situation. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Hakim. Okay. So if you have an idea that you can link to the current situation, that's brilliant. So right now, of course, uh, there is a huge amount of pressure on medical staff, doctors and nurses around the world uh, to help people who are suffering from this virus and, of course, put themselves in harm's way. This is some good language we'll use a little bit later. Um, so you will be able to talk about that nice and fluently and it should make a lot of sense for the examiner. So let's go with Hakim, the doctor. Okay, so Hakim, my father, the physician, uh, in the hospital, working with COVID-19 patients. Okay, good. So of course now our next um, step is notes, usable notes. Practice so you can do this quickly. Give me some notes, okay? So give me some notes. When you write your notes, what should you think about? Before you write your notes, what should you think about? Okay. Yeah, so Awaz says to describe, so let's describe what he looks like first, okay? So give me some uh, appearance, what does Hakim look like, okay? Rajvir says 45 years old, I like your abbreviations, okay? You don't even need to write old because you'll get that, okay? So 45 years, age is good because age does allow us to somewhat visualize what that person looks like. Okay, so age is, age is a smart point to include in the beginning, absolutely. It's a good descriptor. Okay, Boomi says five foot six inches tall. Five foot, okay, it's quite short, but that's okay, so five foot uh, six inches, two seconds here. So five foot, six inches. Yep. Yeah. Tall, fair skin. Okay. Uh, blonde hair. Sure. Why not? Let's go with that this time. Blonde. Curly brown hair says Rajveer. That's fine. We'll just stick with it. Um, Preeti, when you're saying polite, calm by nature, save that for a little bit later. Medium built. Okay, sure. And 72 key. Well, yeah, sure. Let's make them medium built. 72 K G. Sure. Okay. Now we can get a little bit into, um, the, uh, personality. So, uh, Preeti says polite and calm by nature. Okay. So that's kind of two different ones. So polite and calm. Now, when you're doing your notes members for uh, a person, the way that I recommend you do your notes 
is uh, as soon as you mention personality, like polite and calm, then immediately uh, give the uh, action, okay? So the action that backs up being polite and calm. So can somebody give me um, an action? So let's do it this way for the notes, okay? Personality, action, personality, action. So can somebody give me an action for a doctor that would show that they're polite and calm? Okay, so does not get angry with patients. Sure. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. We don't need lots because we can expand while we talk. So Elena says hard working. Okay. Let's go one at a time. So hard working. Okay. Give me, um, give me an action that backs up hard working. So let's go one, one at a time here. I see that you have a lot of good ideas, students, and that's fantastic but control yourselves, okay? So let's go one at a time. Hardworking, what does that mean? Okay. Give me some quantitative information. When you think of um, the uh, personality, hardworking, polite, think of um, uh, quantitative information. So numbers, right? Like how many hours does he work? How many days a week? And think of visual information. Like there's a hospital patient who's screaming, yelling, um, and he stays patient. Okay. Um, okay. So Pavan, this Pavan says works on Sundays. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Krishna says, uh, uh, cooperates with paramedics patients as well as takes care of situations with peace of mind and ready to help round the clock. I like that, Krishna. So works round the clock, especially now with the um, pandemic, right? So remember, you're mixing the COVID-19 in here and Maksud says works around the clock. So works around the clock. Okay, so here I'm writing a little bit more in the notes than I would in the real exam, just to give us a very clear idea of where we're going. So it works round the clock um, with pandemic, uh, Monday to Sunday, uh, 16 hours a day. Okay. All right. So works round the clock. Good, good. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you might include something like smart, okay? So um, has a very good ability. Let me just go from here. So smart um, is very good at diagnosis and giving the right treatment. Um, helped more than 500 people recover from COVID-19, for example, okay? So let's pay some tribute to all of these hardworking medical professionals around the world right now who are really indeed very brave and courageous people helping uh, those who are sick. I can't even imagine how difficult it is right now in some hospitals around the world. Um, so let's not forget the topic of the question, right? Where we have a lot of ideas, punctual and so on. Um, but now let's not forget the topic here, girls and guys, which is brave and courageous. Okay, so uh, give me uh, some good actions to describe why he is brave. Okay, so what makes him brave? Okay, what makes him courageous? Okay, so Ferdov says he's a hero. Why? Okay, so give me some good descriptors, some great actions that would back up brave. Okay, 
Let's see if you can come up with it. Remember, this is for Dov's dad that we're talking about here. That should help you a little bit. So Irulina says, treating COVID-19 patients, knowing he can get infected. So Okay. Rajveer says on front line to fight COVID-19, sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, so his life and life of his family and loved ones at risk, right? If he gets infected, he can infect other people that are close to him right? Okay. Not worried about his own life. Okay, good. All right, students. So what's my next step? Remember, this step is really important. Uh, make sure you practice your timing so that you remember this step before your one minute is up. Okay. So practice your timing before the exam so you can be sure to uh, complete this step in the real exam, which is what is that step? Yeah, absolutely. First sentence. So have your first sentence ready. One of the uh, most problematic mistakes that students make is that they can't start talking when the examiner says, okay, your one minute is up, please begin speaking. And then the student freezes like oh, the deer caught in headlights. So first sentence, yeah, first sentence. Okay, first sentence. All right, students, so let's uh, do that. Let's get that first sentence ready to start off our response. So uh, we uh, decided on uh, Hakim, uh, the doctor. Okay, um, give me your first sentence that answers the question directly. Of course, it's a good idea to again look at that topic sentence on the card. Talk about a person you consider very brave. Okay, so give me that first sentence. Answer the, uh, the question very directly. Please do not say, I know many brave people in my life, okay? Haman says, the bravest person I know is also my role model, my father who is working as a respiratory surgeon for the past 30 years. Fantastic sentence. Let's take that one, Haman. Okay. So, um, the bravest person I know, who is also my role model, is my father, Hakim. Might as well introduce his name right away. Um, who is my father, Hakim. Okay, let's stop there. Next sentence, okay? Well, I'm going to split that into two, uh, Hemant, just because we don't want to make mistakes by writing a very long sentence, okay? So he has been working as a respiratory surgeon and specialist for the past 20 years. All right, nice. Some other very nice answers coming up by our members. Good job. Uh, Boomi says, a person who I think is the most courageous is my father, Hakeem, working as a doctor at Ames Hospital in India. Boomi, very good. Nice. Boomi, your English is really improving. Much cleaner uh, grammar, much more accurate response than when you first joined. Fantastic. Are you seeing, Boomi, that improvement? Are you seeing how much better your answers are now? That's fantastic. 
Uh, Elena says, for me, my father is my hero because he is not only my, my father, but also treats COVID-19 patients during this pandemic without caring for his own health. Um, Elena, that's a really nice sentence. However, I would say uh, most of that information a little bit later um, because you're not really reflecting the question, which is about a person who is brave or courageous. You definitely, uh, members, you definitely want to show the examiner that you've focused in on the controlling idea right away. So courageous, brave person, show that to the examiner. Then you can get into all the other great details. So it's really nice uh, speaking, Elena, but it's not reflecting the controlling idea enough, okay? So make sure to do that. Awaz says, one of the most fearless individuals that I have ever seen in my life is my father who works as a doctor. Awaz, really nice. I like how you uh, paraphrase the words brave and courageous with fearless. I guarantee that that will get you points in your official IELTS exam. Okay. Uh, Charlie says, the person whom I admire because of his courage is my father, Hakim, who is a general physician working uh, at SSKM General Hospital. Really nice, Charlie. Um, you can even say GP for general physician. So in uh, natural native English, we will often say GP, general physician, GP. Okay. Uh, Rajveer says, a person who is extremely courageous is my father, Hakim, who is a physician at Fortis Hospital in Delhi. Okay. So, sure, currently... He is working tirelessly um, at or in uh, Fortis Hospital in Delhi to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, good. So some nice ideas, some nice first sentences, students. I think that you're doing a great job with these. Again, make sure to reflect the uh, first sentence, uh, the topic and controlling idea, okay? Uh, Connie says, a very brave person that comes to my mind is my father who has been working at a hospital as a respiratory specialist for almost 30 years. Very good. Connie, fantastic. All right, students, so what comes next? Give me the next sentences. Um, let's speak, repeat this, and then give me the next sentence. The bravest person I know who is also my role model is my father, Hakim. He has been working as a respiratory surgeon and specialist for the past 20 years. Currently, he is working tirelessly in Fortis Hospital in Delhi to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Very nice, okay? Paying tribute to those true heroes of our current time that are really dealing with these difficult challenges. All right. Yeah. Bumi says, okay, let's talk about the appearance. So yeah, let's do that. Um, this is what we wrote in our notes here. Uh, five foot, six inches, fair skin, blonde, medium build. Okay. So Charlie says he is 45 uh, years old. Charlie say years old, okay? He is 45 years old, uh, around 5 foot 11 inches tall and 68 kilograms. Now, Charlie, you wouldn't really say around because uh, maybe the weight, you don't know for sure, but your father's height, you definitely know for sure. My father's 6 foot 2 inches. He's 182 centimeters tall. I know that for sure. I know it's not around, okay? Um, he has fair complexion and blonde hair. Okay, good. So, um, sure, my father is uh, 55 years old. He is a medium built man, uh, 5 foot 11 inches tall, and around 82 kilograms. He has a fair complexion and wears a smile on his face. 
most of the time. He's definitely an optimist. Okay, so notice what I did here. I actually did an action and then backed up by personality. So here I'm combining action and appearance, then followed by uh, personality. And you can do that to make your speaking more spicy. So I know that uh, some of our members are going for those really high band scores like band eight, band nine. And I definitely, I'm starting to feel that there are a couple of you, Haman, Rajveer, that are in that band eight, band nine range for sure. So uh, that's where you can get a little bit more dynamic with your structure. And here, notice that I did the uh, action personality and then backed up by um, uh, personality. So action appearance, sorry, backed up by uh, personality. So here we go, um, students. Let's read this and then I'll take a look at some of those other great comments that are coming up because I see them. Okay, so um, here we go. The bravest person I know who is also my role model is my father, Hakim. He has been working as a respiratory surgeon and specialist for the past 20 years. Currently, he's working tirelessly in Fortis Hospital in Delhi to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. My father is 55 years old. He is a medium built man, five foot 11 inches tall and around 83 kilograms. He has a fair complexion and wears a smile on his face most of the time. He's definitely an optimist. Okay. There we go. Complexion. Let's get the uh, right spelling there. All right. Um, Roshni says he is very calm and magnus person. These days he works on the front line to fight COVID-19 and, pay, and uh, save patients' lives. Uh, Roshni, that's good. Careful, Roshni, when you have notes, make sure you use them correctly. So um, polite and calm, not angry or upset with patients. So if you're going to say that he's calm, Roshni, then make sure that you're using uh, some of the information from your notes on that action as well. So um, the stress level in hospitals is very high these days. Doctors and nurses are overworked and people are fearing for their lives. Even in these stressful situations when patients are crying out for help and are angry, uh, he is staying calm and doing the best job that he can, right? So that's how I would roll in that action, okay? Visualizing all of that, of course, all right? Uh, Elena says he is 45 years old, uh, five foot six inches tall with fair skin. He's a medium built man and quite healthy. He's down to earth and friendly with others. He has great dedication to his work. Um, Elena, the description is good, okay? Um, the next part where you say that he's uh, down to earth, friendly with others, is very dedicated to his work. You're really jumping from personality to personality without giving a backup of action. So when you say he's down to earth, what do you mean he's down to earth? Um, he sits patiently even for two to three hours with the client and listens to their complaints uh, and gives them very honest answers about diagnosis and treatment plans. That would be an example of down to earth, Elena. Okay, so back it up with action. If you tell somebody um, personality traits, but you don't really back it up with action, it doesn't have a lot of value for that listener because they're like, well, okay, but what, is, what does that mean? What do you mean, right? Um, so always keep that in mind, students. Personality, action. Personality, action. Okay. All right. So Haman says he is 50 years old, six foot tall, 70 kilograms, and has an athletic build. He wears spectacles while working. Otherwise, he's more physically fit than me. <laughs> Very nice, Haman. Okay. Um, all right. 
Yeah, Elena, it's not necessarily just an example to strengthen the comments, but it's an action or a behavior that lends credibility, believability to the personality that you're saying. Okay, so that's what you want to do. All right. Abhishek says he is 56 years old and he has a muscular physique, five foot 11 inches tall, around 88 kilograms. Uh, he's always ready to attend patients without any time limit. Okay, good. So um, <clears throat> let's go with what Roshni started there. He is a very calm person, even in the midst of the medical uh, chaos at his hospital these days with stressed out medical staff and angry and frightful patients. He keeps his cool and encourages everyone to stay positive and do what needs to be done. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm making it up just like you. The only difference is I'm, uh, of course, a little bit more practiced here, but it's important to focus on personality backed by action. So in whatever way you imagine him staying calm at a hospital that's overrun by COVID-19 patients, that's what you want to describe. Okay. So he is a very calm person, even in the midst of the medical chaos at his hospital these days with stressed out medical staff and angry and frightful patients. He keeps his cool and encourages everyone to stay positive and do what needs to be done. Okay. When I'm reading these members, viewers, make sure that you're repeating me. Okay. Uh, when you see new expressions like keeps his cool, that's an idiomatic expression to stay calm. The reason I use this is because patient and patient have the same sound. They're homonyms with different meanings, but it's awkward to say frightful patients. He keeps patient. It's kind of like, uh, what? So that's why I'm paraphrasing. Okay. And I don't want to use the word calm again. So calm patients keep cool. Okay. So, uh, take notes of those words and write them down in the midst of chaos. Okay. Notice this word midst. Okay. It's a nice word to learn for your everyday English midst. This is one of those words that you might not learn or see as an English as a second language student. But you'll definitely realize that native speakers use that word quite often. Okay. All right. Now, um, we've, we're coming along here and we're definitely at about 30, 40 seconds of speech, uh, after getting going, especially since students are usually a little bit slower in the beginning. So about 30 seconds in at this point, you definitely want to make sure that you target the topic. Okay. You can expand his personality and actions more later, but definitely, uh, target the topic and the topic here is brave. Okay. So now you definitely want to, uh, explain why your father is brave. Okay. So yeah, Abhishek says, check the cue card questions. And of course, what you'll realize, Abhishek, you're right, is that, okay, this uh, controlling idea, it's not about him being calm. It's not about him being uh, hardworking necessarily. It's about him being courageous or brave. So we have to uh, target that. So let's do that. Okay. So let's explain why he's brave, why he's courageous, why he is fearless. I can't remember who used that word, but that was a really nice synonym fearless. Okay. 
So Roshni says, from uh, the day the contagious disease spread, he not only works more than eight hours a day uh, on the front line seven days a week, but he saved more than 500 lives. That makes him very courageous in my eyes. Okay, that's good, Roshni. I'm going to tune that a little bit, but I think you're on the right path. Okay, so he puts his own life and the life of those whom he loves at risk to help thousands of people suffering from the coronavirus, right? Um, from the start of the viral outbreak. Uh, he has not only worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, but also successfully saved the lives of more than 500 people in critical condition. This makes him truly fearless and courageous in my eyes. Very nice, Roshni. Very nice. Okay. All right. Um, how's the screen, members? Is it bright? Is it too bright or is it dark? I'm trying to uh, figure out the lighting situation here so it's optimal. If it's too bright or too dark, let me know. It's not so easy on my end to see that like you do. It looks okay for me. If it's okay for you, let me know. All right, Boomi says he is a hardworking person, works around the clock uh, 10 to 16 hours a day. Roshni says a little bit bright. Okay, Roshni. There we go. Thanks. Um, good. Uh, not taking days off to treat ill patients. Okay. All right. Uh, for Dov says, although it's easy to be, it's easy to get infected. He goes to work 16 hours each day, saving the lives of individuals. Very, very good. Okay. Nice. Good work. More sentences. Elena, keep going. Kesey, I saw that you were in here as well. Keep going. Awaz, nice. Awaz says the main aspect that makes him courageous is he not only works 24-7 since the spread of the COVID-19, but also risks his life to save people who are suffering from this infection. Rajveer says he is definitely a fearless person as he's fighting with COVID-19 on the front line and puts his life and his family's life at risk during this pandemic. Really nice, Rajveer. Abhishek says, The reason I believe he is a fearless person is because due to this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, he is a, he, uh, a pandemic which is uh, communicated disease. Uh, he keeps working hard. Okay, Abhishek, I think you're losing it at the end there, but I can see what you're saying. Um, all right, my father does not think of his own safety while taking care of the infected people. He just wants to make sure that these strangers are returned to their families in good health. Abuki Muhammad, thank you for joining our uh, group of members. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with those exclusive videos. All right, Elena, he has saved more than 1,000 people infected by the virus. He not only works day and night, but also works on weekends. In the end, he saved over 100 patients. He does not care about his own health. He just cares to return people back home to their loved ones. Okay. Very nice. All right. Now, let's look at the card. 
Okay, so don't just keep talking uh, and go off topic. Make sure to answer all the questions. Look at the card. Uh, what makes this person courageous? We talked about that. What is this person like? We talked about that. What would you ask this person in a conversation and why? Give me some sentences for that. So what would you ask your dad in a conversation and why? Talking about bravery, right? So I'm going to write this down and then I'll look at your responses as well. We'll compare. Uh, there's no one right answer. There's a lot of good answers that you can give here. Just make sure to focus on answering clearly, completely with good vocabulary and good complexity. Okay. So if I got into a deep conversation today with my father on the topic of his work, I would ask him uh, what the most difficult part of his job is. Also, I would inquire about some inside information regarding any possible cure for the corona virus and his predictions about what people can expect over the course of the next six months. Unfortunately, I don't have the time, or unfortunately, he doesn't have the time these days to get into extended talks with me as he is up in the morning and off to work before I'm awake and he comes home super tired at around midnight. All right. So that's how I would finish that response. All right. Connie says during his hard work, he couldn't come home. Mm -hmm. Connie, I see that you're kind of on the same path as I am. Come home after to finish his uh, daily excessive jobs. He lives in a cheap motel to isolate himself from others. Yeah, and I bet a lot of doctors are doing that. They're isolating themselves from their families and their friends to avoid potentially spreading the disease. Many of them are probably staying in the hospitals as well. So incredible uh, jobs that all of our medical staff are doing around the world these days. Uh, Roshni says, I would ask him what I should do and how I can help him in his work. And also I would discuss his work, uh, what parts are most difficult. Okay, very good. Elena says, as my father is a doctor, he has a clear explanation for the virus. He uh, has told me about its DNA structure and also uh, gives me insight uh, to um, how to avert it. Uh, and some preventative measures. Okay, Elena, good. Uh, Rajveer says, I would definitely ask my father to learn the ways to maintain uh, my cool in such a dire situation. Yeah, how to control your emotions and yourself in such a challenging situation. Very nice. Okay, excellent. Uh, students, lots of good answers coming up. Awaz, Haman, Bumi, I like it. I got a quick glance at those. They're great. Uh, let's go from the top. And let's go through this again together. Uh, the bravest person I know who is also my role model is my father, Hakeem. He has been working as a respiratory surgeon and specialist for the past 20 years. 
Currently, he is working tirelessly in Fortis Hospital in Delhi to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. My father is 55 years old. He is a medium-built man, 5 foot 11 inches tall, and around 83 kilograms. He has a fair complexion and wears a smile on his face most of the time. He's definitely an optimist. He is a very calm person, even in the midst of the medical chaos at his hospital these days, with stressed out medical staff and angry and frightful patients. He keeps his cool and encourages everybody to stay positive and do what needs to be done. He puts his own life and the life of those whom he loves at risk to help thousands of people suffering from the coronavirus. From the start of the viral outbreak, he has not only worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, but also successfully saved the lives of more than 500 people in critical condition. This makes him truly fearless and courageous in my eyes. If I got into a deep conversation today with my father on the topic of his work, I would ask him what the most difficult part of his job is. Also, I would inquire about some inside information regarding any possible cure for the coronavirus and his prediction about what people can expect over the course of the next six months. Unfortunately, he doesn't have time these days to get into extended talks with me as he is up in the morning and off to work before I'm awake and comes home super tired around midnight. That's it, students. Uh, students, um, you've done a great job, okay? Uh, thank you so much for your participation. Fantastic words and sentences coming from many of our members. I'm really, really proud of you. And um, in 90, or sorry, in about 30 minutes, in half an hour, uh, I will continue uh, with a, an IELTS reading class. Uh, this class, students, I would just like to uh, finish off with a little bit of an applause to uh, all of our uh, medical staff, doctors, nurses out there who are treating and helping uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, sick people who um, are putting their lives at risk, just like how we talked about Hakeem today. So really uh, give your positive energy, think about them, and um, very, very proud of these heroes. So have a nice rest of your day. Hopefully I'll see most of you uh, in the next class in 30 minutes for some reading practice. Bye for now.